thank you very much, Alvaro. Uh, well, I don't have any presentations to, to share. I hope my connection is good. Otherwise, if I have to turn off my camera, okay. I'm going to no, no, convert this into a podcast. <laughs> so uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Alvaro Iñaki and Marta for thinking about me to, to join this, this interesting project. I, I really, uh, well, Sorry for the slang. I had a blast uh, doing research for for this project, and my presentation of today uh, it's about to present the, the results of a working paper that I had to develop for the the working group led by Alvaro himself and and Joao Nogueira, and uh, they actually asked me to do a practical study based on fieldwork uh, to gather information about the the current use of these technologies of basically big data. AI and machine learning uh, for tax purposes. So I had actually to check uh, what was the, the real implementation of, of the technology for taxation. That was the, the, the main purpose of this, of, of my working paper. Um, so I, I basically um, made a, a compared study among several EU countries, the, uh, especially focusing the attention on uh, Estonia, France, Ireland, the Netherlands and the UK. However, when I came uh, across with something interesting uh, or relevant from other countries, I also included those results in the in the compare study. Uh, this is the case of Croatia, which I uh, thank uh, Senia for uh, helping me out there uh, with that. Uh, Germany, Italy and, and Denmark. Those are some of the, the countries also relevant for the for the study. Uh, the paper is divided in, in three parts. I uh, focus attention on the use of technology by taxpayers to improve tax compliance, uh, the use of technology by tax administrations for tax management and uh, tax inspection purposes. And finally, I examine which are the legal limits uh, for the use of technologies within the EU context. So I'm going to present some of the, the, the results, the most relevant ones. Let's start from the, the, the beginning, the use of uh, technologies by taxpayers. So. In order to tackle that part, I first observed uh, how uh, technologies could improve compliance for both formal tax obligations and material tax obligations. So I examined whether uh, there are platforms to submit the tax returns, if uh, the tax obligations can be fulfilled uh, via a smartphone, for instance, on if there are new technologies of communication with taxpayers to ease in the tax compliance, and if there are any strategies to promote the, the use of technologies, among uh, many other questions that you can read in, in the paper once, once it's published. Uh, so first, let's just start with the, the platforms for submitting tax returns. Uh, here, uh, on, uh, the results of the selected countries, for instance, in Estonia, it was the first country to actually initiate a, a digital transition. So they count on an e-tax and electronic tax filling system since the year 2000. So 20 years ago, they, they already started that uh, uh, transformation process. And nowadays, approximately 98% of the population of the taxpayers uh, declare the taxes online. And actually, uh, a, a remarkable thing is that from 2015 onwards, they are very proud to uh, announce that approximately be, uh, it takes th three to five minutes to uh, declare the personal income tax return because they have pre-filled forms uh, with very accurate information that they obtain from crossing several sources, several databases. Uh, these profile forms, you can also find them not only for personal income tax, but for many different types of taxes. Uh, in the case of France, for instance, they, you can also de declare the taxes online. And the relevant thing I came across with France is that they uh, find out that the administrative routine cost of bureaucracy, having to deal with bureaucracy, not only for tax purposes, but general administrative bureaucracy, uh, oscillates between the 3 and the 5% of the GDP. So 
In front of this data, uh, an interesting initiative to reduce the bureaucracy is a pilot program called Dilenus en foi. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, uh, but it, uh, the translation is tell us once, tell us once, uh, which means that citizens introduce data to one single administration. This means that or the intention is that uh, a citizen that introduces data once for one administration doesn't have to introduce the same data again for another administration. And theoretically, there is going to be internal automatic exchange of information among the different uh, public administrations by using big data. Uh, and we can use this uh, uh, new pilot program to already uh, have information pre-filled in the online forms to declare, for instance, a tax return. For instance, if for another uh, purpose we had to inform about the family situation, about the number of people living in a household or any other data relevant for tax purposes, and another tax administration already have it, then when we want to do our uh, income tax return, Theoretically, that information should already appear there, and this saves us a lot of time. And I found that initiative very, very interesting. Uh, let's move on to other countries. Uh, there are the, the Netherlands, which uh, already has a, uh, well, you can declare your taxes perfectly online with pre-filled uh, forms. And uh, a particular an interesting thing of the pre-filled forms here is that uh, they have memory. So once you have to even though they are very complete, if you have to add and uh, introduce new data, uh, the program remembers it for next year. So this way you can just add that information with one click and save that uh, uh, saves time as well. Uh, this is the contrary that happens to Ireland. I mean, you can declare your taxes online uh, through the revenue online service, the ROS, but uh, they don't have pre-filled uh, uh, income tax returns, for instance. And um, moving to the UK, uh, a very interesting initiative I, th uh, uh, I saw is the, the program Making Tax Digital. Um, by Making Tax Digital, the, the Her Majesty Revenue and Customs, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, uh, they want to transform the tax administration to make it more effective, more efficient, and easier for taxpayers to get their tax right. So the intention is to use digital record uh, keeping tools. And right now, uh, for, this is the very first year that uh, it's a mandate that all VAT registered business need to keep the digital VAT records and send their returns using compatible software with uh, Her Majesty Revenue and Customs. And they want to expand that digitalization, fully digitalization, in 2024 uh, for personal income tax of uh, self employed people and uh, landlords, and in 2026 for corporate income tax. So, Let's move on in the in the study and uh, we know we can declare taxes online uh, through a web page, but can we use our mobile phone? Can we use any apps? Well, uh, surprisingly in Estonia, despite being the pioneer, uh, I didn't manage to find any specific mobile phone app to declare your taxes through uh, through there. Um, but that's not the case as, uh, of the other countries. For instance, uh, in France, they developed an app. You can access uh, the, the pre-field uh, declaration, check it, validate it, send it to the tax authorities. And you can also check information from uh, previous uh, past years. And I think it's up to three years. Uh, and you can also download and share documents via SMS or email to third parties from that app. Um, in Ireland as well, you uh, they have developed a, a, an app for businesses and for individuals. And the interesting thing of this app uh, for businesses specifically is that uh, they have the possibility to download the, the offline application. So you can work offline without needing internet connection, fill it in, in the mobile phone app and then send it to the tax authorities once you have the connection. But you can work offline and for individuals, yeah, you can work connected to internet and they can access their personal space, etc. 
And also for the for the UK, uh, Her Majesty Revenue Customs have uh, has a, a, an app. You can do several things. Um, you can access, update your personal data. Uh, you can communicate uh, with the tax authorities through this app. Uh, you can use it to calculate deductions, to claim for refunds, etc. But the masters of the apps uh, are the, the the Dutch. Actually, in the Netherlands, we have several apps. Uh, there is uh, one, for instance, to declare the, the personal income tax return, um, but it's very limited. I mean, unless they don't really have uh, the, the information and it's pre-filled, uh, you cannot really um, add new information and it's quite complicated depending on uh, uh, the, the type of data that you need to introduce. Uh, you can also find a customs app. Uh, where you can find information about the products that you can import or not to the Netherlands, and you can upload photos of uh, your own products and uh, also from the, the, the receipts and the tickets uh, in case you, you have to travel and to, you have to inform the tax authorities that you already had those products before with you. Uh, but uh, you can also find other apps related to, to the tax authorities. Uh, there is one app specifically to provide information about the tax obligations, the upcoming tax obligations, and you can also find uh, an app about the main trends on tax fraud. And that is thought by, to inform taxpayers how to detect such practices. I found that app very, very interesting. And as we are already in the apps, we know we can declare uh, the, 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 the information through the apps, but can we pay through these apps? Yes or not? Uh, in the case of Ireland, the Netherlands or the UK, uh, you don't really have indications or I didn't manage to find uh, that you can pay your taxes through the app, uh, but in France you can indeed. Um, and regarding the methods of payment, uh, can we pay with regular, normal, classic methods of payment or can we use cryptocurrencies and blockchain? Well, unfortunately, we don't accept in the EU countries I checked cryptocurrencies as uh, a valid method of payment of, of taxes and uh, blockchain is uh, not yet a reality. Even though, as, as Senia explained some minutes ago, uh, there are very interesting initiatives that might make possible to implement blockchain for tax purposes very soon. Actually, I, I wanted to mention that there is an interesting initiative called the, the Mediterranean 7, uh, where uh, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Malta, Greece, and Cyprus uh, want, uh, they join forces to promote the use of blockchain technology within government services, not specifically to uh, pay taxes, but at least they are developing a, a common effort to, to use blockchain for several public administration services. And Let's move on. So we are now in the path of disruptive technologies. So how can we taxpayers communicate with uh, tax administrations and vice versa? Uh, are there any new ways to communicate and to make compliance easier? Well, I have to say that um, I was surprised to discover that tax authorities are very into social media. Yeah social media. So, for instance, in the case of Estonia, uh, they have a Facebook account, a Twitter account, Instagram account and a YouTube channel to inform taxpayers, even though they are not very active. Uh, in France, for instance, through this app where you can declare and pay your taxes, you can communicate with the tax authorities and receive notifications in that app in the mobile phone, but they also have a Facebook uh, page and a Twitter account. Uh, in Ireland, they also have a Twitter account to share information, news on, uh, uh, on tax obligations, upcoming tax obligations, etc. And the interesting thing of Ireland is the virtual digital assistant. The virtual digital assistant is an artificial intelligence, a, a chatbot, uh, to assist the calls that the tax authorities receive at the, the, the help desk. So they use uh, smart suggestions to have fluid conversation with the taxpayer. 
and they are able to detect that in case the question is too complicated, they are able to switch and transfer the call to a proper uh, revenue officer, physical person to answer the, the question of the taxpayer. But at least, well, they are using artificial intelligence to answer the taxpayer's questions. And let's move on to the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands, they, uh, they have also uh, social media, they have a Facebook and an Instagram uh, channel to keep people posted on the upcoming obligations. They have two different Twitter accounts, one for individuals, one for uh, uh, entrepreneurs, and they also have a YouTube channel. And in this YouTube channel, uh, they share deeper information on tax topics, on tax obligations, on how to fulfill the obligations, and they use a plain and approachable language with the taxpayer. But meanwhile, the Netherlands were the kings of the apps in the mobile phones, the kings and masters of social media is Her Majesty Revenue and Customs. So they even have a community manager a team, a social media team, because they have to manage 12, 12 different accounts in social media, all of them for different purposes. They have four different Twitter accounts, uh, one for official news, uh, one just to communicate with taxpayers and share and answer questions. So just for that, they also have one Twitter account uh, for job alerts. I mean, if you want to work for uh, Her Majesty Revenue Customs, be uh, aware that uh, there are job alerts in one uh, Twitter account specifically. They also have an Instagram account with quite casual and also uh, funny videos on how to properly comply with uh, uh, tax obligations. Uh, they have a Facebook account uh, with a more serious tone. I mean, you know that the Instagram target and the Facebook target are different uh, profiles, so they use different tones in uh, both apps. And they also have a very complete YouTube channel and very updated. At least once a month they upload a video where you can find interviews with taxpayers, interviews with uh, Her Majesty Revenue Customs employees. Uh, they also have a series of videos to, uh, uh, dedicated to schools for tax education for, for children to uh, make them aware about the importance of paying taxes. And they also have an interesting uh, section uh, for the Making Tax Digital program in order to keep informing, keep uh, creating awareness about the digital transition that Her Majesty Revenue and Customs is going to make. Well, it's a starting right now, but in the upcoming years. And with uh, this last point, um, I'm going to answer the, 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 the following uh, point that I, I, I researched, which, which is, are there any strategies to promote from the tax authorities the use of technologies by taxpayers? Well, in the Netherlands, Estonia and Ireland, I didn't manage to find any specific strategy to promote the use of technology for tax purposes to comply with with tax purposes. But I have to say that uh, in France, for instance, um, they are advertising the advantages of the program Tell Us Once, which is very important. And uh, Her Majesty Revenue Customs, apart from this YouTube channel that I mentioned a, a few seconds ago, uh, they also prepared a communication package to provide material and sources and different information to help uh, stakeholders, uh, lawyers, tax advisors with the communication to help their clients and their customers to prepare for the digital transition. So I'm going to close the taxpayers part here and let's move to the, um, the tax administration's part. So how the, uh, which is the perspective of the, the tax authorities and how they use the technology for tax management and tax inspection, tax audits. We well, have first a few minutes only, yeah? Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I'm finishing, Alvaro, don't worry. Uh, so for tax management and tax inspection, 
uh, France, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, highlight the uh, France and the Netherlands, but I would like to highlight especially uh, the UK. The UK have uh, has an algorithm called Connect, and uh, this algorithm recommends individuals and businesses to be investigated, and it recommends these individuals and businesses based on crossed information obtained from several uh, 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 databases uh, from the records that they have in the tax administrations and the databases they have in uh, other uh, uh, governmental premises and also social media. So they verify the reliability uh, of the, the, the tax declarations based on the information that they have. Also, I had to mention Italy. Italy in 2013 uh, implemented the, uh, the application called Reditometro and it acts more or less like this, uh, this UK uh, uh, algorithm. So basically the Reditometro, Reditometro crosses hundreds of different uh, variables and the outcome of crossing those variables is to compare if the sums paid by the taxpayer uh, that they has been spent uh, match with the sums declared online. So if there is a more than a 20% difference between what was declared, what was spent, then a tax audit might be carried out. And finally, Germany. Germany since 2017 uh, makes tax, uh, tax assessments fully automated. However, tax authorities uh, uh, reserve the right to manually examine certain uh, taxpayers in case they uh, entail a high risk of uh, deliberate tax evasion uh, or fraud. So reaching this point and how tax authorities are using algorithms to uh, for, for tax management and tax purposes, it's time to uh, think about the limits of using uh, technology for tax purposes. And uh, as you might uh, imagine, there are neither specific domestic legislation nor EU legislation that frames the usage of AI and big data for tax purposes specifically. So in order to find the limits uh, of how, when uh, uh, to use big data and AI for tax purposes, we need to mirror the EU primary sources, establishing principles, fundamental rights and guarantees to help settle the boundaries. And I think that we need to pay special attention to the right to privacy, uh, the right to fair trial and due process. But I would like to finish with the right to equality and non-discrimination because um, I mentioned a lot of communication, a lot of digital uh, examples for digital transition of uh, uh, to comply the tax obligations and uh, the progressive digitalization implies that individuals we need to have certain knowledge of IT. So even though a high percentage of the EU population masters the IT uh, technology enough, there are still uh, part of the population who lack of such knowledge and this uh, digital transition puts taxpayers in an unequal position and makes them not ready for an entire digital communication with the tax authorities and an entire digital uh, fulfillment of their tax obligations. So in a nutshell, in conclusion, uh, the normalization, the expansion of uh, AI, big data and other disruptive technologies for uh, for tax purposes uh, makes it necessary to not only update the, the, the principles uh, to the current context of digitalization of tax administrations, but also to uh, create a specific legislation and regulation to create clear boundaries when uh, uh, the, the limits of the tax uh, of the technology for tax purposes need to be implemented. And that's it, Alvaro. That's it. That's uh, all I have to do. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Thank you for your brilliant, Ryan, and uh, clear presentation. Thank you very much, Maria.